Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and as you can see here, I've got two Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultras. They are identical phones, except for the color difference, and except for the chip that they use inside. So this Mystic Bronze version of the Note 20 Ultra is from the UK, and it comes with Samsung's own Exynos 990 processor, whereas this Mystic Black version comes all the way from North America and has the Snapdragon 865 Plus. And the reason I'm making this video is because a few months ago I compared the two chips in the S20 phones and I found that the Snapdragon was faster, it had a longer battery life and even took better photos. So here we are with the Note series and if you guys watched my review or my early hand I was gonna say hand boxing, hands on unboxing video, uh, you'll know that I was feeling pretty frustrated that it felt like we were getting a bit of a bad deal here in the UK. The Exynos 90 was already slower than the Snapdragon 865 in the S20, but then Samsung went and put the 865 Plus in the American Note 20. So it felt like the disparity between the two was gonna be even greater than before. So Qualcomm very kindly heard my ranting and complaining and sent one over from North America this Mystic Black one so I could put it to the test. This video isn't sponsored, this is an unbiased look at the two phones. I'm going to run through a bunch of tests including performance, battery life and also the camera to see if I've just been getting upset over nothing or if there is a genuine difference. And let's kick off by looking at the performance. And starting with the Geekbench 5 CPU test, the Snapdragon is a whopping 21% faster in multi-core. But then switching to the OpenCL graphics test, and surprisingly, the Exynos version comes out way ahead. Honestly, that actually really surprised me, and I wasn't sure if maybe there was something wrong with my uh, Qualcomm version of this. So actually, I got my friends uh, Michael Josh from Gadget Match, David Kogan from the Unlocker, and also Enebong from Board at Work to send me their uh, results from Geekbench from those Snapdragon versions, and they were all broadly similar, actually. So for some reason, in the Geekbench OpenCL test, the Exynos is way faster. But then, when we move on to 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme Test, and actually, even before we get to the results, side by side, you can tell the note on the left is definitely running more smoothly. As for scores, and again, there is a significant difference, with the Snapdragon model giving us a 16% faster OpenGL score. But let's move on to actual games. Let's see what like real world performance is like between them. And considering we're getting 120 hertz screens and flagship specs inside these phones, you'd expect a pretty flawless and also pretty similar experience. Well, let's start with Call of Duty Mobile, and I'm using an app called GameBench here to get the FPS at the top left, and it also measures the average frame rate as we go. So this is the black Snapdragon model, and bar the odd drop to 59, you can see it's a pretty consistent 60 FPS. And then switching to the Exynos, while it still hits 60 pretty regularly, it does seem to be less stable and it can go down to 57. I then took a screenshot of my results from the tests which show a 60 versus 58 FPS average. So a slight difference, but not the end of the world. But then if we fire up a bit of Armour Mobile Ops, which supports full 120Hz and is a pretty demanding game, it does play well on both phones, although you can see the FPS varies quite wildly on both. Looking at the results, again there's only a 2 FPS difference, so the Snapdragon is faster but not significantly so. And then finally in Asphalt 9, which is capped at 60 FPS, and after playing a few races on each phone, looking at the results, the Snapdragon is 3 FPS faster. So all three games were faster on the Snapdragon, but only by 4% on average. But I know what you're thinking, those are just short bursts of gameplay, what about longer gaming sessions? Well I went back into Armour Mobile Ops and played the game in the exact same way for half an hour on both phones, which I think is a pretty reasonable gaming session if you're, say, on your commute. And then we do see a bigger 6.2% difference in frame rate, 113 versus a 120 average. But what's really interesting is if we go from the 30 minutes of gameplay, followed by a quick benchmark, and then we go to check the CPU temperature, you can see the Snapdragon is at about 48 degrees Celsius versus 57 on the Exynos. So even if performance was on par between the two chips, the Exynos will likely have to throttle sooner in longer gaming sessions. Now having said all that, the Exynos version isn't exactly slow. I mean, if you're just scrolling through menus or opening up simple apps, honestly you really can't tell much difference. However, in games, you do see the Snapdragon model load a second or two faster, which isn't insignificant, but at the same time, it's not something you'd really be able to notice unless you had them both side by side like this. So we've talked a lot about performance, but the next question is battery life. How long do they last? And I think for me at least, this is more important than having an extra couple of frames per second in your games. So let's look at the screen on time to start with. And both phones were set up exactly the same way, and I used them both in a similar way over a two day period. 
the Snapdragon gave me 6 hours and 32 minutes of screen on time versus just 4 hours and 31 on the Exynos, which died 4 hours earlier. Now of course there's a whole bunch of variables there and I can't exactly duplicate how I use the phone, so let's do a good old fashioned battery rundown test. And to save you from getting, you know, bored to death, here are the results after running through a pretty intensive YouTube, gaming and social media binge. And as you can see, the Snapdragon model here still has 7% of its battery left when the Exynos gives up. So again, not a massive difference, but 7% will probably give you another 45 minutes of charge. Plus, looking back at that screen on time test which showed a 2 hour difference, hopefully this gives you an idea that while not night and day necessarily, the Snapdragon, which is also more powerful, does last a decent amount longer. And finally, is there any difference in the camera quality between the two phones? While I don't expect there to be a huge difference, the cameras are essentially the same, however the ISP or image signal processor that does well as it says on the tin, a large part of the processing of the image, is built into the chip so that is different. And while the photos are very similar, you can see the Snapdragon shots are actually a little bit brighter, particularly in the shadows, and there's also slightly more detail which is interesting. Often it's hard to tell them apart, but with these photos of my wife Sarah, again you can see the overall shot is a bit brighter on the Snapdragon, plus the orange sleeve on her t-shirt is more true to life on the Snapdragon. The Exynos is closer to red. Again, you wouldn't really know the difference unless you had them side by side, but there is a difference, and overall I'd say the Snapdragon's photos are slightly better. It does seem weird that I've made this whole video about two phones which should be near enough identical. I mean, they're marketed in the same way and aside from some currency variation, they're priced in the same way. So the fact that one of these two phones is faster, lasts longer, and even to a lesser extent takes better photos doesn't seem exactly right. The only mitigating factor is that Samsung does give us 256 gigs of storage on the base model of this Exynos version compared to 128 with the Snapdragon. But I just think if Samsung was more transparent about this or maybe even gave us a slight discount on the Exynos version because it's, well, objectively not as good, that would go a long way. Having said that, it is good that we are seeing some competition from Samsung. I mean, Qualcomm, aside from Apple and, you know, some MediaTek phones, pretty much have a monopoly when it comes to good uh, smartphone chips. So more competition is good, and for that reason I do appreciate that they are making their own chips, but then until you can make them pretty much exactly the same in terms of performance, don't give some people better phones and then other people not as good ones based purely on where they live. Fingers crossed though that the rumours of the next gen Exynos with AMD graphics coming in 2021 comes true. Overall though, I don't think I'd go as far to say as don't buy an Exynos version of the Note 20, it's still a fantastic phone, but it does feel like we're getting just a bit of a bad deal here, although I do appreciate the uh, extra storage. But what do you reckon? Should we be boycotting Samsung until they, you know, give us better chips or at least the same chip between the phones? Or am I just making too big of a deal of this and in real life, you know, the average person wouldn't really be able to tell much difference anyway? You could argue that this whole thing's a moot point because unless you're willing to pay for international shipping and you can find a website that does ship internationally, then, well, you're kind of limited to buying the one that's in your region anyway. So there's that. But thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you do want to see more from me, then make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below and help me get to that one million subscriber mark and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chat.